Awareness is a silent and choiceless observation of what is. So this one, Krishnamurti defined awareness as the silent and choiceless awareness of what is. Do you know the meaning of it? Any of you can understand. Is there a difference between what he defined awareness from the one I share with you all? Sati is awareness before the knowing. Okay? <clears throat> then awareness is a silent and choiceless observation of what is. So this one is Sati. Equals awareness before the knowing. Means before you perceive, before you arise, the mundane mind. Then, what is Krishna Moti's definition of awareness? Silent observation. Ah. So this one you read, I want you all to read choice. together. <clears throat> okay. Awareness is the silent and, and choiceless observation, observation of what is. So the key word is silent. Awareness is the silent. And choiceless, choiceless observation. Observation of what is? Huh? What is? Is the essence of thing. So here, this is J. Krishnamurti. Huh? So the key word of J. Krishnamurti is awareness, huh? which is he defined as a silent. Silent means what? No thought. Okay? So same or not? Huh? Then he add in this one. You know what is this? Choiceless observation of what is. Choiceless means what? You don't make choice. That's why he said, wherever there is choice, there is confusion. Means when you observe, you don't do anything. Just observe. Understand? So when you do that, the mundane mind cannot come in and interfere. Understand? <coughs> the thought will not come in and ask you to do this, do that. When you can do this, my spelling correct, right, huh? Choiceless? Yes. Uh, looks like not correct. Right, huh? <laughs> so when there is choiceless, means the thought is not there to make a choice. Understand? Huh? Like and dislike. Pleasant and unpleasant. This one is addition. He put it in to make sure you don't make this mistake of making a choice. Understand? Huh? So the other way is to understand it as Trust. Understand? Trust your nature to do. So when you trust, there is no interference. So it's just a pure awareness. Huh? That is the awareness nature moved by itself, observed by itself, see things as they are by itself. You understand? So both is the same. Well, what I put there is before the knowing. Knowing means what? Before you perceive. So before you perceive, you cannot think. Isn't it? Correct or not? Ah, sanya. Then the memory comes in. So the content of consciousness cannot go in. Isn't it? 
That's why, to me, this awareness is before the knowing, means the direct seeing, the pure awareness. Okay? Whereas, he is helping people to understand. He put the word silent, a lot of people cannot understand him. Silent means what? Uh, don't talk. Uh. <laughs> but inside there could be chattering, you know, verbalizing. You know. But when he adds in, uh, choiceless awareness means you don't do anything inside there. You know. Don't go and make choice. You know. So this choiceless observation is the silent mind observing you know, without reaction, without your prejudice coming in. You know. Without your conditioning coming in, without your belief system coming in, without your phobia, your trauma, your whatever insecurity of fear. So all these are not there. So that's why it's choiceless. So silent mind is your true mind. That's so your awareness nature. Observing. Observe what? Yeah. What is what is? Ah, the reality, suchness, the isness of things. This is what the Buddha wants you to see. This is seeing things as they are. Understand? Not. As they are. This is the silent awareness, direct seeing. So. so when you do that, then you observe that all this happen. there is a movement. Understand? There are causes and conditions behind, just like what the Buddha saw. Understand? That's why he has a deep, he has awareness. Otherwise, how can he know this? How can he say, wherever there is a meditator, there is no meditation. Wherever there is effort, there is no meditation. Who is the meditator? The thought, isn't it? So, everything is the same when you understand. But when you don't understand, you read the quote, huh? You think he's something wrong. Understand? So now I go through the code you understand. Yeah? So effort is also by the thought. You need a thought to do. Understand? To know. To apply effort. Yeah. So observer and the observer also say. He said the observer is the observer. So who observes? Ah, thought observe. What did thought observe? Another thought. Ah, another thought, yeah? Your emotion, your sankara activity, your state of mind, your content of conscience. So thought is observing thought. But living being is so deluded, they separate the observer out. No? They say, I am observing. No? So what happened? He observed anger. He said, I have. Anger, understand? But who's the I? It's the thought. Thought observing thought, no. And you go and separate and create problem for you, no. So the delusion delude you. You think the observer is the observer, but in a wrong way, understand? Actually, the observer is the observer, but you think the observer is a living being, an entity, a permanent unchanging entity. So I observe what I. Observe happening. Then I observe, I have anger, I have fear. He actually not observe. No. After it happened already, uh, then the thought, uh, when he separate the two, uh, the thought say, I have anger. No. And anger is an evil rule. Uh, anger is bad. So you use knowledge, you end up like that. Uh, uh. Then when you say, anger is me, what do you do? You want to get rid of anger, isn't it? So how you get it? <sighs> you either suppress it, or control it, or force it to disappear. Understand? Or not? But who is doing that? The thought is trying to get rid of the thought, the content. I mean, you, you, you are fighting among yourself without you knowing what the hell are you doing. You know? And there is real delusion. You know? Understand? Or not? Yes. Okay, now we read the code. Awareness is a silent and choiceless observation of what is. In this awareness, the, pro the problem unrolls itself. You understand? No? When you observe what is, all of your so-called problems 
first reality of the uh, the eight reality of the first noble truth problem, they will unfold itself. Understand? Or? And thus, it is fully and completely understood. Now you understand. When you are aware without choice, or when you are aware before the knowing, there is no observer doing anything. Understand? Or? And you see things as they are. This is what the Buddha words are. But Krishna would say what is. What is is also the reality. It's also uh, as they are, as a suchness. So got different now. There is no different. Then the next one is uh, a problem is never solved, uh, this is probably uh, on its own level, being complex. It must be understood in its total process and so on. You must see the full movement, how you are conditioned into negativity, how you stir. Then you understand who you are, what you are, and how you function as a human being. Then only you can understand what is going on and so on. If you observe and observe the entity, the scarcity is very strong, you always say, I have problem and so on. The eye is so strong now. I don't like this. How can the world be so unfair? How can United States be so uh, aggressive? You know? All this come from thought. If you don't observe the awareness behind, you cannot see the evil root, the selfishness behind, the delusion behind. Then how the anger come to be, the condition arising, dependent origination condition, you cannot see. Understand? Then the psychiatry is stuck there. Understand? Then you think you exist. Then thought divide. Thought is limited. Thought create what? Words, concept, and idea to divide and delude. Then conflict, misunderstanding, and war arise. Jealousy, hatred, fear, everything arises because of thought. Because that is why thought is limited. Thought divide and create suffering and problem. So you must understand thought. Then when you see that thought is limited, it cannot let you develop wisdom. It can accumulate memory as what? Knowledge, isn't it? What else can the thought be? Do. Because everything that you put into the content of consciousness is a memory. Isn't it? Memory is the past. You understand? No? Whatever you accumulate is something earlier on. No? So, Krishna would say that memory, the past, is like the dead leaf. You know what is a dead leaf or not? Already decayed, dry up, ready. How can this one understand the present moment? No? How can this one understand life which is in the present moment, state of flux, which is never of the past? And the past is never a reality. That's why you cling onto the path, the thought project develops fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow, lamentation, and all those things, including the scars of memory. You see, all these are the conditioning that you develop when you accumulate. That's why when you understand thought, you know thought is capable of all this, what must you do? Huh? What must you do? You must have the wisdom. The one I eat ran off. <laughs> now my after try to look one. One small pill, uh, sweet and give me. Where was I? You must try to. Oh, about thought, eh? Uh, not what everyone. should you do? So what must you do? You must learn how to develop the wisdom to use thought. Understand or not? Means thought create all these things, limited, create words, concept, and idea to divide and cause conflict. You still want to think and allow this to continue to multiply and create suffering and misery to the whole planet and the world. That's why I used to tell you all what. Like J. Krishnamurti came to know. He said, thought 
is mechanical. Thought, like I tell you, is capable of only knowledge and that's all. Mechanical thing. Psychological thing, don't use thought. You understand or not? Thought is useful. Why? Because you need to remember who you are, that's all. Right? Where you live, who your wife is or your husband is, who are your children. When old age got dementia, how? Huh? You cannot recognize it. Right? It's like the thought got no use in it. And this how. Right? So what happened is you must understand how you sign your check and this how. Right? Where are your wealth? Where are your property? Also, all these are mechanical things, which is a fact that society demands that you need to remember. Understand? But this has got no psychological impact on understand? understand? When it comes to psychological problem and memory, if you accumulate, you die. Why? Psychological means what? Emotion. Understand? And before you become enlightened, what are your emotions? Uh, all the things we write one. Right? Fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow, lamentation, despair, and all the nonsense. Including your phobia, uh, your scars of memory. Everything that you have there. These are psychological memory. Why do you want to remember psychological memory that bring about remorse? Understand? Fear, anxiety, sorrow. You recall all the child abuse, all the suffering and misery that you go to. Uh, immediately that thought, uh, something trigger, the phobia arises. And uh, the insecurity arises. So psychological memory is used thought. Thought create the movement. And, uh, so thought project into the future. Before it happened, it tell you, hey, die already. You got cancer, okay? Terminal stage four. Then ask doctor three months or six months. What happened when you project that thought? When you cannot see what is, you cannot accept the reality of the moment. You panic in it, intense fear. In it. That's how living being get into trouble. So thought has its purpose. Understand now? It's right place for us to study science. We need thought, understand, for academic, for knowledge, that you know, want to travel, uh, apply visa, all those things. You, you need thought to understand all this. Uh, then for me to share, I need to use thought, understand, uh, for me to exist, I need to use thought. Otherwise, the senses, how to communicate, understand. Uh, like you don't have this ability to speak. How you communicate? Uh, sign language, nah, they come out here. <laughs> but how many people understand sign language? Only those who teach and study it and got problem one day go and learn it. Eh? Normal people won't learn it. Eh? <laughs> so your senses are very important. When you are deaf, you cannot hear, you got problem. When you are blind, you cannot see, you got problem. So if you don't allow psychological problem to be accumulated in your memory, then you got no problem. That's why Krishna Muti say, it must be understood in its totality. To try to solve a problem on only one level, which is physical and psychological, you die already. Understand? Not? Me? You go and think about it. Understand? Not? You think thinking can help you to develop the wisdom to free? No way. Your thought is egoic. It has not developed the wisdom. Unless you become enlightened, you have the Dhamma, then what happens? All the thought you use are right thought. All the thought you arise are without the evil root. Like all the virtue, contentment, generosity. These are also thought. These are also something to do with virtue and that's not your state of mind. But these are not negativity or state of mind. Means not the problematic thought and that's not. So when it comes to psychological memory, you have to be very careful. It creates problems. 
so leads to further conflict and confusion so you cannot solve a problem on only one level means physical or psychological leading to further conflict and confusion for the resolution of a problem there must be read the word awareness. ah this awareness this passive or choiceless alertness understand which review this total process and now the teacher samupada that the word the buddha talk about understand now how avijja paja sankara sankara paja vina that how you develop the craving grasping clinging becoming and you take birth exactly the same understand now why can't you understand it so that time when i want to teach you know how many pages on Huh. I have to explain and explain and explain. That song new, this is important. That's why you read this, I don't know how many times you ask him. Yeah.